Good morning, men. Welcome back for this uh, session on uh, Dad's Armor. Uh, we remember we discussed the first week, the first battlefront was the, uh, the heritage, our, our heritage as our, our earthly fathers, the heritage we have with our earthly father, and the heritage we can embrace uh, from the history we have with our heavenly father. And last week we talked about uh, the heart, the busyness. Uh, one tip I want to give you to think about when it comes to setting right priorities in the home, when it comes to your heart. Uh, I always like to, if I see a new dad, I like to give him a jar with 936 marbles in it. Why 936? Because that's how many weeks you have from birth to age 18. So if there's any better motivation to know that we have a window of time, a 15 to 18 year window of time to be an influence in the next generation, take out a marble every week and have a visual reminder of where you are. You know, I have to confess that I wasn't involved with parent-teacher conferences or much school activities or anything with my daughter through the fourth grade. So when I looked at her jar, 400 marbles were gone. So I had to double down on the time that I had left with her. And uh, I guarantee you it was a tremendous blessing and a tremendous wake-up call to see that visual of how much time I have with my daughter and my son. This week we're uh, moving forward with house. You know, what's the battlefront on the house? There's a, a lot of lot going on trying to distract us and, and uh, take us out. We have things coming into our home beyond what we could have comprehended even just uh, 5, 10, 15 years ago. But first, I'd like to uh, talk about you individually. I'm going to get into your house a little bit. I hope after these weeks together that I have the uh, right to do that. But I, I think it's critical. Uh, it's not critical. It's, it's paramount that uh, we take responsibility to be clean as men before we can do anything else. Ephesians 5, 1 through 7 states it pretty clearly. Uh, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. But among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Do not be partners with them. That pretty well lays it out. How are you doing against that standard? You know, uh, we have to watch it these days. You know, you, you can think about David on the roof because he uh, didn't go to battle. He was, had some idle time and walked around on the roof and voila, there's Bathsheba. And that's all it took to take a, a king down. And uh, obviously caused a tremendous heartache and a, a tremendous example for us. For us, it's just a pop-up on the screen that can distract us. And uh, we have to be aware of that. Look at your vulnerabilities and understand where you're, uh, where you're most likely to be attacked. But our call is to absolutely strive to be clean. Turn from it. Rebuke it. Uh, just don't let it get uh, a wedge in, in your relationships at home uh, or, or at work. So be that imitator. Relationally, uh, we have to evaluate our, our uh, relationships with our friends, uh, how we relate to the opposite sex, uh, how we handle things at work and uh, with our peers. And finally, uh, the battle buddies that we need to help keep us to this standard that we're calling, that Ephesians 5 calls us to. You know, in uh, uh, Proverbs 5, this is, uh, this is where Solomon tells us to pay attention to uh, my wisdom, listen well to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey. Keep to a path far from her. That's my confession, men. I was physically faithful to my bride, but I had given in to the adulteress of the world. You know, when you're chasing that almighty dollar, the world has taken you by, under her wing. And that's an adulterous affair. That's all there is to it. And I had to keep it in that perspective to be able to rebuke it and uh, take, take a turn away from it. And uh, what we can't do is embrace it. You know, there's a tremendous story of, uh, in the Old Testament in 1 Kings 20 where uh, the Lord actually delivers the Arameans and Ben-Hadad to King Ahab. The prophet came and said, uh, the, the Lord's going to give them to you. You just have to take care of business and, and, uh, and kill all of the Arameans. 
And uh, so King Ahab, uh, sure enough, goes through the battle, uh, wins the victory. He says, uh, but then after the Israelites had defeated the Arameans, King Ahab set Ben-Hadad free. See, Ben-Hadad was king of the Arameans, and he was not to be set free. The prophet met the king on the road, and he said to the king, This is what the Lord says. You have set free a man that I had determined should die. Therefore, it is your life for his life, your people for his people. You see, that's really what we do when we embrace sin. We're crucifying Christ all over again. And it's, it's not what God guys are to be. We're to be on the right track. We're to be in relationship with Christ and rebuke sin. Now, we're going to stumble. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is continuing to go back to that computer at 11, 12 at night. What we're talking about is continuing that flirtatious attitude in the office. What we're talking about is just wrong thoughts creeping into your mind uh, for financial uh, integrity. These things that we have to absolutely rebuke. And uh, my call to you is to get that battle buddy in your life that will ask you those questions and keep you clean because uh, the devil knows your game plan. <laughs> and he, he's, uh, he's got the lies just right. You see, he doesn't even have to tempt you directly necessarily. He just needs to take your eyes off Jesus just a little bit and into the world, and he'll take you down that path. That's exactly what happened to David, and that's what can happen to you. So uh, just be aware of that and take care of that. So individually, you must strive to be clean. Relationally, you must be aware of the worldly influences that work to take you out. And finally, spiritually, how is your house? Is your house clean? Uh, let's, have you ever taken an inventory of your house? Page 23 is a series of questions just to rate your house when you were growing up. Uh, what was the atmosphere like? Was it a clean atmosphere? With one being contaminated and 10 being clean, how was the atmosphere when it came to anger? Was there anger in your home? Was there uh, uh, verbal uh, just voices raised all the time? That would be a, a one. Uh, occasionally they'd lash out, at, at mom and dad might get in an argument, that might be a five. Uh, or if, if voices ever got raised, the table was issued until things settled down, that would be a nine or, or a 10. How about foul language? Was there any cursing in your home? Is that something that was just part of the process? Uh, I always thought the loudest and the cursest uh, was the most intimidating in our home. And uh, so I just ask you, was that, was that the case in your home on a scale of 1 to 10? How about alcohol? Were your parents teetotalers? Uh, or was there alcohol uh, available in the home? Or was there uh, alcoholism uh, an issue in your family? That would be a, uh, alcoholism would be a 1, a teetotaler would be a 10. How about pornographic material? This is one area that uh, definitely distracted me as a young man. I, when I moved out of the house, I moved in with uh, my brother-in-law and, and eldest sister. And my brother-in-law uh, subscribed uh, religiously to Playboy. So that was a material that I was exposed to at a young age. And uh, that proved to be a challenge as, as I matured. So how was your home growing up? Uh, one would be, yes, that material was available. Uh, five was... Uh, uh, sometimes it was available, and then 10 would be absolutely not. It wasn't, it, you would talked about it and rebuked it from your home uh, from the get-go. And uh, finally, how about, again, where we want to ask about the marriage relationship. How, how was that marriage relationship in your home growing up? And uh, rate that on a scale of 1 to 10. Was it toxic or was it healthy? And uh, finally, uh, as you do, as, as we have on the previous uh, passes, let's uh, go ahead and look at your home today and those respective areas. How, is, uh, how would you rate anger in your home today? How are you doing? How about foul language, alcohol, pornographic material, and finally, your marriage? Just, again, uh, circle those areas that are within a point of each other with how you rated your home growing up and put a square around the areas that uh, there's a delta of three, four, uh, three or four points and uh, use those as, as talking points for your small group discussion when you, when you break out in small groups. Spiritually, a man must stand firm for his home. The standard is uh, in Deuteronomy 7.26, it says, do not bring a detestable thing into your house or you like it will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor and detest it for it is set apart for destruction. Wow, <laughs> now that's, 
Take an inventory. What's coming in through the internet, through uh, magazines in the mail, uh, advertisements in the mail? What about what's on your television, the cable channels coming into your home? Take an inventory. And are these th would these things be considered detestable from any normal perspective? Uh, what I found when I took an inventory is just about every TV show I found a bit detestable. Uh, I had to take an inventory and, and establish controls over social media coming in. You know, these are some things I've seen some dads do in very powerful ways. Just shut down technology at a certain hour of each night. Uh, to have a central docking station each evening. That this stuff is not going to uh, happen, uh, distract us across the night. There's not going to be the long hours of video games or, uh, or long hours at night texting friends. Th those kinds of things were shut down uh, from the get-go. So uh, that's something that, uh, to keep in mind as we, uh, as we talk about uh, what's coming into your home. Finally, take a stand for your home. I love the example that Josiah gives us. Josiah is one of my favorite kings in the Old Testament, and uh, he took a stand for his kingdom. You know, Josiah took on the kingship at age eight when his dad was assassinated, and I think it was around age 16 when his, the secretary found the book of the law in the uh, temple and uh, read it in the, in, in, uh, in the presence of the king. Josiah got so convicted in the reading of the word that he ripped his robes and said, uh, you know, God must be tremendously uh, disappointed in us and, and angry with us. And uh, so he began to try to understand more of the word and move forward in, in his own walk spiritually. And, and he proceeded to uh, uh, move forward as, as documented in 2 Kings 23, 24. It said that Josiah got rid of the mediums and the spiritists, the household gods, the idols, and all other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. Neither before Josiah nor after him was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength in accordance with all the law of Moses. You know, earlier in chapter 23, he actually read in public hearing the book of the law. So that would be like our president of the United States reading from scripture in national TV. Instead of state of the union, let's talk about the state of where we are faithfully. Now, that may not happen, but my challenge and my question to you is, would you be willing to do that with your family? Are you reading scripture to your family? sharing the story of Josiah, uh, sharing some of the New Testament uh, parables and just letting them know who you stand for and what you're about, leading the way spiritually in your home. What a great way to fill time that used to be on, uh, spent on social media after seven o'clock each evening to share some of those stories and talk about the biblical uh, uh, history that we can embrace as dads. Now what we know, of course, is that the world's gonna continue to be the world. Uh, temptations will persist and, and uh, battles are real. Uh, what we can do is to offset the world encounters with God encounters. And uh, so uh, accountability with your battle buddies is a, is a, is a key piece of that. Uh, time in prayer and scripture, both individually and as a family, is, uh, is a great God encounter in the home that will offset some of the world encounters. I think. I think that's one of the biggest challenges uh, in the home. It just seems like the, the news and the, per, the ability to maintain any kind of perspective with the intensity and the uh, sensationalism of the news today. You know, how are we to maintain a perspective? Well, we're told to maintain an eternal perspective. And we can do that if we're sharing the word and uh, talking about it when we lie down, when we get up, when we walk, walk along the road, when we sit beside our kids at the dinner table. So my encouragement is to add a family devotion time each evening and carry a, a story forward that uh, means something to you. So with that, I'd like to wrap up here. Let's uh, wrap up in prayer and uh, let you go into your small groups to discuss some of the things that the Lord's put on your heart. Uh, what we're doing here is, of course, uh, I call this the feet fitted with the gospel of peace. You know, this is, the, uh, this is our uh, other piece of the armor that we're putting on to uh, make sure that we're carrying the gospel forward, that our kids understand clearly that Jesus died, he was buried, and that he rose from the dead, and uh, that he has saved us from the penalty of sin, the power that sin could have over us, and the, uh, 
That's a powerful statement to our kids to move forward with all the boldness and confidence of the resurrected Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I do praise you again for this day and just thank you for the heart of these men and ask you to bless their time together in discussion as they go over the, the, the ratings that we've discussed and uh, inventory of the home and, and things that we can do diff differently as, as leaders of our home, as your representative in our homes. Just bless our time. I lift this up in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.